And joining us in studios, uh, Mr. Miamezeli Shedrick Boy, or I should say Honorable uh, Mr. Boy, ANC MP. And we have in studio Temba Gordy, Chair of the Parliament's Portfolio or Standing Committee, rather, on Public Accounts, Scopa in short. Zamo Madala is Black Empowerment Foundation spokesperson. And Cecilia Russell, ANN7 Special Projects Editor. Good evening to all my guests and thanks so much for joining us. We'll start with you, Mr. Gordy. Uh, just what we've seen in Parliament in terms of uh, the contracts at S. Uh, primarily around the uh, the fact that there are the, these evergreen contracts that have just been renewed, etc. Obviously, it's a it's a concern for a nation that needs to to account for every penny and deal with issues of corruption. So I just want to have your view live, seeing that we it's the first time we have you in studio. <laughs> no, uh, <coughs> well, thank you very much for for having me. I hope this is one of many to follow. Um, well, the issue of evergreen contracts. Uh, has been of concern to Scopa. And if you look, you'll find that uh, basically in all um, state-owned entities, this uh, apartheid practice uh, is prevalent. And when we met uh, the leadership of SAA, we have demanded that they should give us all the lists uh, of the evergreen contracts, when they were signed, what the companies are, what are the amounts that have thus far been paid, uh, so that we can have an engagement with them. Well, uh, just before we left uh, to, uh, to, to go on our oversight, we, we were informed that TSA has submitted stacks and stacks of documentation. Um, we, we will go through them, uh, put aside the evergreen contracts, look at how they are, and then probably have a hearing specifically focusing on on, on this so-called evergreen contract. All right, now coming back to the matter at hand, a SAA has uh, posted a 19 million rand profit for the month of July. Uh, the, the, is this a beginning of a turnaround in your view, Mr. Boy, or do you think that it's, it's, a, a norm, it's a abnormal, an aberration, so to speak? <coughs> we should always welcome when there's some positiveness that is happening. But also we... The one that, like Scopa, who keeps the eyes on the, on the purse. We should also be concerned of how these things are, are being done, you see. Because you might, <clears throat> this is what we are saying today as we're dealing with the South African Express, that we find that, that there, there's quite a lot of money the South African Express pays to the South African Airways, becoming the chat full world and all those things. So we need to be able to keep our eyes on and find the detail. But where does that come and mm. who has lost what? You see that thing? It's like saying Telcom versus South African Airways and then you want to put the 10 to billion into Telcom while you realize that, I mean into, into, into South African Airways, while you realize that Telcom is a little bit stable, you see. Mm. So that exchange is what would always be one that we keep an eye on. Yes, but I mean, the, the level of scrutiny only came about because of the, the exposés that AN and 7 had done, and thank you to Scopa and Parliament and the South African public for having a, a, the, the confidence in the work that uh, was done in that particular story. Would you say that it's because of that scrutiny that we, we see the strategy almost being ex expedited and being put in place? We'll start with you, Cecilia. Um, <coughs> yes, I, I hope so. I, ho I hope that we've had a bigger imp Im impact on this. We weren't the only media that looked at SAA, but I think we certainly had, we, we went uh, and looked at it in very, in very, in very great detail. I think that we are, are the, the scrutiny can't end. It has to, you know, this is the beginning of something. I'm glad that they've made 19 million rand profit. They, if they had to implement the the, the recommendations of, that e, of the EY and ENS report, they could be recovering about two billion, so in, in a year. So mm. uh, you know that would that would cover just about you know a, a great deal of their, their losses so far for a year. So I think that there's lots more that still needs to be done. Mm. And I mean, then just going forward, whether it's now only on Scopa or Parliament or, or other departments like Treasury, uh, should also have an oversight role more in, in the operations of SAA or generally state-owned entities, not to put it under administration necessarily, but mm. uh, to, to follow the money and, and ensure that they're eff efficient. Not true. Uh, I think uh, today when we're dealing with SA Express, the role of the department came very sharply into focus because uh, these SOEs are not orphans. They have departments 
who have specific sections whose responsibility and task is to monitor uh, and supervise these entities. And uh, when, you, when, you, when you go through the decisions that were taken that have led to the situations that we find ourselves in, you ask the question, who, where were the supervising departments when all these things were happening? So indeed, uh, I agree that uh, supervision, monitoring has to be continuous, ongoing. Um, SAA might have made a profit in July. We don't know what will happen in September. Uh, so you need to, to monitor, ensure that uh, there is continuous uh, forward movement. And even when entities are making profit, they need to be monitored because that's when they become extravagant and take decisions that three, four, five years down the line become a liability. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's been uh, uh, criticism around the leadership of Tutumieni and, uh, you know, on the one side, she also uncovered a lot of the corruption or alleged corruption that is happening in the airline. 19 million rand, well, you know, you could argue it's a drop in the ocean considering the, the loss sure. that the airline was making. Your view sure. in, in the question around the extension of her tenure, uh, uh, Zamu? Well, um, um, our, our, our view, thank you for the opportunity, our view is that we believe that there, there was just way too much that was made about one individual at today's meeting. In that, I mean, if you look that the, the, the company had a set budgetary loss of 207 million, but then they could turn that situation around to make a profit of 19, 20 million. So it goes back to the initial budgeting, who had done that and how was that done for for somebody to have come with a, a position that they could lose 200 million in that one month. How did that, how was the budgeting done? Which executives did that? How, who did what? Now, if, if you're gonna constantly sit and, and, and be on the chair's case, as though the chair runs the business on a day to day, I mean, um, hopefully Scopa tomorrow visiting SAA, we're gonna, we're gonna find out a bit more of what actually happens inside the building rather than constantly having to try and figure out. And also the 19 million rand profit, was it because um, jet fuel price dropped? There's gotta be a reason for it. Mm. It can't just have out of operations that all of a sudden they made a 19 million rand profit. So the real reason needs to come out. How did they make the profit? Yeah, maybe the point you're also raising is that the political influence in the state-owned entities hampers the, the function of not only the executive but also the board as we've seen in, in other cases. Are you of the same view, Honorable Boy? <coughs> Look, that's what we want to curb. Always involvement by political leadership into the operational matters of, of these particular entities. But what we must congratulate you to assist us to do governance to our best. We should bring this type of matters to the fore assist what you want to achieve to have good governance in so that when what he says it's not one individual that gets the blame but here there's a collective of people or a board of people who are managing the day-to-day -day operation and who are able to show us it into the future the reflections of good progress mm. but if that doesn't happen parliament has to always come in a scope and be able to put pressure for good governance to become number one but how long will SAA be dependent on government guarantees or what some call bailouts, Mr. Gordon? Look, we, we have made the point, and I think we will make it much, much clearer even tomorrow, that uh, <clears throat> if SAA is going to get a cent of public money, uh, it will have to uh, really subject itself to parliamentary scrutiny in the first instance. And secondly, it has to... Uh, it has to improve on its government uh, process and systems. It, it must be clear that uh, there is no bottomless pit of money where you can always run to and uh, every time you're in trouble, get money from government. It's not there. Our economy is not doing as well as it should. You look at our budget, it's very stretched. So there has to be a sense, and sometimes you meet with officials, you just get a sense that they just don't get it that you know yeah, this is a, a culture of how things are done and in the chaos there's many that benefit yes. and and there's yeah, impunity true. very true very so, true. so but i mean how does this change them i mean the 19 million my, one might be saying we're blowing it out of proportion but credit to the team uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get the numbers but if you look at the reports around seabury and bain and company that were released 
in, in how what should be done. And uh, I don't know if the turnaround strategy was also one of those documents that were collecting dust. <laughs> you know, because it's one thing to have these fabulous concepts and sophisticated strategies and, and nothing comes off it. Well, the long-term turnaround strategy, I think, has been spoken about since the 2014 annual financial statement. So it's been ongoing and, and it's been going on for years. And it's, as much as they are to be congratulated for the 19 million rand profit, my take is, if you can make a 19 million rand profit, why couldn't you not just do this on a month on month? And then at the end of the year, you're going to end up telling us you made 250 million as a total profit for the year. Um, the, the business structurally has always been weak. From the days it was taken out of Transnet, the balance sheet was weak, it wasn't strong enough. It would need government to really dig into the coffers if SAA is to continue as a going concern. The, the issue of providing guarantees is simply useless because they always end up having to go to the open market to borrow money, which costs money. Now we are in junk status, so it costs more to get the money. So at the end of the day, the airline actually needs to be properly capitalized and also strengthened to be run properly. I don't think it has any business sitting in Treasury. It should be with the Department of Transport. And I think the recent Zimbabwe debacle actually explains to all of us why it should be sitting with the Department of Transport. And because that's where all the transport businesses sit. And, and we also need to take advantage. I mean, we've got British Airways flying all up and down around the country. I don't think we do the same in the UK. So all those things need to be looked at mm. when you want to look at running the airline going forward and profitably and stop being stuck around. One individual could have possibly brought SAA down to its knees where it finds itself now. Yeah, because we're sitting with a national carrier that doesn't yeah. really own its own assets in terms of the fleet uh, that is reliant on external imported costs from service providers uh, and the, let alone the, the, the rand dollar exchange rate, all sorts of challenges. <coughs> but in terms of getting the, the airline to be profitable, if they are executives, especially at the procurement level, who then put in their preferred suppliers, very little else will change in this scenario. Cecilia, I mean, how do you see this playing out um, with all the information in the public domain? Well, I think that one of the things that, you know, Scopa and other organizations that are looking at it are going to have to look at all the procurement in, in SAA. I mean, I think that those two reports show that there are all sorts of very bad practices that are going on with, 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 with um, you know, um, uh, contracts being extended. But while we have our two honorable members here, perhaps we could ask them. One of the, one of the key questions that is, that is going to be coming up is whether, S, whether resolving SAA's problem and SAA Express's problem is going to be to amalg amalgamate them. And I think that that is something that you're going to have to put your mind to as well. Yeah. yeah. All right, just hold that thought, Cecilia. We will uh, just take the next insert and continue on the SA Express and SAA merger. In studio, we have Cecilia Russell, ANN7 Special Projects Editor, and we have uh, Temba Gordi, who is Chair of Scopa, and uh, we have uh, Zamo Madala, who is the spokesperson for the uh, Black uh, Foundation. Black Empowerment, Empowerment Foundation. <laughs> Thank you. And Mia um, Mezeli. Uh, Shedrick Boy, ANC MP. Now, as mentioned, uh, the, the part, part parliamentarians rather, and uh, the uh, Standing Committee on Public Accounts were on an oversight visit at SA Express, and high drama played out as the visiting MPs were denied access to the logistics department. And Scopa is probing more than uh, the 35 million rand in irregular expenditure incurred by the airline during 2016. The committee is trying to engage various uh, departments to get a real sense of the issues. I'm, I'm, I'm really disappointed. It's, it's quite, quite uh, disappointing and worrying uh, how this uh, airline was brought to the situation where it is, where it's, it's, it's a disparate situation. But uh, as Parliament, we're committed to ensuring that this is, this is corrected. They are hiding, you see, because they don't own planes and the planes that they do have belong to foreign companies and so that's your problem and some of some of the part of the problem is that they've got contracts about different services that they're providing and those contracts are not existing
Management was excluded from uh, the first four uh, visits that were supposed to take place. Now, when we had arrived in the morning at about 9 a.m., it was announced that uh, the visits to logistics unit, uh, the access into that logistics unit was not going to take place. Now, that brought about a big discussion and a lot of tensions as to what SA Express was trying to hide there. And it is a belief that allegedly the reason behind them not wanting Scopa to go into this logistical unit is due to the aircrafts allegedly being leased and not owned by SA Express. And during our meeting, uh, Chairperson uh, of Scopa, Gordy, kind of noticed that a member of management was kind of hiding in the back of the room and he called him out during that session and asked him to leave immediately. And after that, you started to see, um, I think that the the operations team that they were speaking to currently were a little bit more comfortable to give them a true sense because they kept going on and on about you need, uh, you need to be honest uh, to Scopa as to what is truly going on at SA Express so that we can assist you. Sounds like a cat and mouse situation taking place at SA Express with Scopa's visit uh, this afternoon. We'll get clarity on Mr. Gordy whether indeed it was a case of having to fish out some managers who were, who were trying to avoid you. Well, look, <coughs> the, the experience we had when we went to the SABC, uh, when we visited various divisions, with management was that uh, the workers were not free to, to talk. So when we went to SA Express today, we made it clear that management should stay out so that we can talk to the workers in terms of what the issues are. So it was to be that uh, at one point uh, somebody <coughs> sneaked into the room and I had to <laughs> ask for people to move and mm. ask him to leave because I felt we had agreed in his presence that they should stay away. So why he came in, I felt that was, yeah. that was wrong. You, you, you offer the view that there is a lot uh, that is being kept under wraps at SA Express for the mere fact that <coughs> you couldn't assess their logistics and uh, whether they have planes or not. What, what sinister so issues the, are going on? If they say to you, <coughs> we've got 530 contracts, and you say, okay. Then they say the contracts dropped to, 30, to 50. And then you say, what happened? How, and how much does those contracts I mean, like, uh, cost us? And suddenly nobody gives answers. You then realize that there is a problem of not being honest. Because our understanding is that when we come in as parliamentarian, we only seek honesty from them to declare that, look, this is what is our challenges. So that when we go back to parliament, we know how to assist them into building capacity. Mm. So when, and also you see they, they, <coughs> they've got planes there from Scotland. Now some of them, now in the evening they were saying that literally we don't know, they are there. We have to maintain them and we can't maintain them because we don't have the money. Now these are some of the issues that create the suspicion that these guys are hiding something from us. Mm. Because if they could have allowed us to have gone in, we want to see what is going on in the South African Airways Express and see how they're managing themselves. They, don't, they can't manage the... And the this edges. was a planned meeting or a planned visit. It wasn't an ambush or one no. of those. The chairperson and the staff has put every information. For, for a week, they've been engaging them, you see. Even on this thing of us going to logistics was very much important. But sadly, some technicalities are now being introduced to make it difficult for us to arrive there. Yeah, the solution going forward in terms of merging the low-cost airline, is Mango, SA Express and SAA, uh, in, in, in your view, Mr. Gordy, do you think well, that would be a possible way of cleaning up the financial mess there? Well, look, in the, <coughs> in the first instance, when we met SA Express last year, um, the then Deputy Minister of uh, Public Enterprises actually hinted uh, in that direction that there is that uh, that process um, but uh, <clears throat> when we met with them this year and the minister was there there was no talk about uh, that possible measure uh, there was now talk about a 25 percent uh, you know shares to be sold to private companies as a possibility um, <clears throat> I think we we, we would welcome the, the merging of the two because as things stand, SA Express relies on SAA for, for almost everything, from issuing tickets, from buying fuel, 
from from basically almost everything. So, and 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 SA Express pays money to uh, SAA in terms of service charges and also penalties for late payment, and yet. SAA collects money on behalf of SA Express and pay them twice per month. And only thereafter does SA Express then pay SAA. Uh, so it is, I think it would be much, much, much better and easier uh, if the two were merged and we just have one company. Uh, but the preferred supplier, I beg your pardon, being Bain and Company, Mr. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think not. <laughs> I think not. <laughs> But I mean, I think the concern that, that was there is that the opportunities for smaller players and to dilute the, uh, what, what has been the status quo in where the contracts go. So are, are you going to scrutinize or should Scopa uh, now get into the operations of, of who gets the contracts and how compliant are they in terms of the uh, BEE quotas? You see, you must understand, we then say to you there's a BEE quota that must be honored so that you don't have him chasing us all over. But you then get to the staff. They don't do that. You've got legacy problems of that some of the entity in the entities, some of the planes are not owned by them. They're owned by international people. So how do you deal with that? And it has been happening for quite a long period. And there's not been any strategy of how you turn that around. So you take an entity that is indebted and you can dump it on another entity that is indebted, which doesn't have a transformative I mean, like a uh, strategy of how it's going to make it possible and how would they continue making profit. They don't have that in their mindset. Mm. They're becoming babies of the state and they just want to remain like that. Okay, so what's your warning to SAA for your uh, inspection <laughs> visit tomorrow, Mr. Bode? No, look, um, we, we said that when SAA came to Parliament, that was a preliminary uh, hearing that we had, almost like, you know, a probing engagement which assisted us to identify, clear, and isolate the issues. Uh, our coming to see them tomorrow, it's part of that process of bringing them closer and us getting closer to understand the issues. I can assure you that uh, um, we are going to have, we have cleared our day tomorrow, the whole day we are going to camp at SAA. And the focus is not, it's not the board mm. and one or two other people is to really get into the belly of the beast to understand what exactly is happening that is leading to all these losses. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Once again, thank you indeed yeah. for your time. Uh, we had Honorable Miamezeli Shedrick Boy, ANC MP. Temba Gordi is the Chair of Parliament's uh, Standing Co Committee on Public Accounts. Zamu Madala, Black Empowerment Foundation spokesperson, and Cecilia Russell, ANN7 Special Projects Editor. And thanks uh, for you at home for staying with us. So we'll take a quick break and we'll see you on the other side of this.